Japan is well known for being one of the most peaceful countries, often ranking within the top 10 of the Global Peace Index. But just because it's safe doesn't mean that there aren't people out there who are trying to scam you. Of course, you probably know about some of the more common scams here in Japan, like the pizza scam, where pizza restaurants charge you $40 for a medium-sized pizza. But I'm gonna tell you more about the hidden scams. A lot of them are unique to Japan, and scammers use these to target mainly non-Japanese. So let's talk about how scammers are gonna target you and how you can stay safe from them. The train ticket scam. Target tourists. This scam isn't as widespread as some of the other scams in this video, but it is something that you do need to be aware of. You're at the train station ticket machine trying to figure out which ticket you need to buy when a seemingly nice person comes up to you and tries to help. They'll ask you where you're going and show you how to buy tickets from the machine, but after you get your change, that's when they strike. This scam's a little bit tricky to spot because there are actually really nice people here in Japan that want to help you out, but it can be easy to confuse a scammer for a good Samaritan. So when in doubt, just ask one of the train station staff if you need help. At bigger stations, you'll often find the staff in full uniform standing by the train ticket machines, and at smaller stations, you'll find them behind the ticket gate counter. So feel free to ask them anytime you need help. The bar and restaurant scam. Target everyone. In Japan, it's so common to see people standing outside handing out flyers, little packs of tissue, and this is a very effective way for companies here to advertise their services to people. But there are some seedy bars and restaurants that use the same tactic to get unsuspecting people into their establishment. Once in there, they'll use different tricks to try to get as much money out of you as possible. Some restaurants may bring out some food to you without you even ordering, and then when you go to leave, they'll demand that you pay for the food that they brought out to you, and it's usually really expensive. Sketchy bars will serve you overpriced drinks, and in some extreme cases, they may even drug the drinks, and they'll rob you when you're passed out. Now, it can be difficult to tell whether that person on the street is trying to lure you into a bar or a restaurant that is planning to rob you. Most legitimate businesses are going to be really respectful to you when they advertise this way. They may hand you a flyer and they'll give you a little bit of information about the, the business or the restaurant or whatever they're advertising, but they will leave you alone if you decide that it's not somewhere you want to go. So if someone on the side of the street hands you something and they start following you and pressuring you to go somewhere, then there's a high chance that they're planning to take advantage of you. The charity scam. Target everyone. The charity scam is pretty successful because it exploits our desire to help others in need. Here's how it works. A scammer will approach you and they'll ask you if you want to donate to some sort of relief fund that's happening outside of Japan. They'll then take out a small photo book and show you pictures of people who are suffering and in need of help. And then after that, they'll pull out a small notebook. In it are pledges from other people who have donated to the cause. Now, Oftentimes, these previous pledges were written by the scammers themselves, and the pledge amount is often really, really high, ranging from 1,000 yen, which is about 10 US dollars, to even 10,000 yen, which is about $100. So when you look at those pledge amounts, you feel a little bit of pressure to match that amount that others have donated. Now these scammers are pretty easy to spot because they tend to be from countries like Thailand or the Philippines so they speak really really good English. From your heart. You know heart. They also rarely show you the name or give you any information about the organizations that they claim to work for. Now they're not very persistent so if any time during the interaction you decide that you're not going to give and you just want to walk away, they'll let you go for the most part. The Buddhist monk scam. Target tourists. This scam was really common before the pandemic and it was actually very successful so I imagine that once travel starts up again we're gonna see an explosion of the monk scam. A scammer dressed as a monk will come up to you and they'll hand you a small charm. It could be a small coin or a small bracelet and then they'll say a little prayer with you. When you go to return the charm they will then deny it and then they'll pull out a little notebook filled with the pledges of previous donators. And of course the pledge amounts are somewhere between 10 US dollars up to 100 US dollars and they will pressure you to donate. After you've handed over your money, the monks let you keep the charm and then they'll walk away. Now the best way to spot these scams is by the monks themselves. Japanese monks never dress like this and they will never approach you and ask you for money. They usually look like this and they're standing on the side of the road holding out a bowl to accept donations. They're not going to follow you and they're not going to pressure you. They just kind of stay off to the side and leave you alone. The Tinder scam. Target, dumb, young, desperate men. 
Now this one is probably one of the most obvious scams on this list, but there are still people who fall for it. While you're on Tinder, somebody will match with you and they'll tell you that they're really close by and they're ready to meet up for some fucking. And no, I'm not talking about Wendy's first kitchen. If you agree, then they'll tell you they're a broke college student, they actually need some money, so they want to charge you for the session. If you agree to that, then they'll say, hey, let's meet up at a local convenience store. And when you get there, they'll message you and tell you, I've been tricked in the past by people who showed up without money, so I need you to prove to me that you can pay. Then if you agree to that, they'll ask you to go buy a Visa prepaid card for the amount that you agreed upon, take a picture of the card with the receipt and message it to them. Once you send it over, they quickly clean out the card of all the money and they disappear on you forever. So how can you protect yourself from this? Well, if you're on Tinder and somebody brings up the topic of money, then just avoid them. Now, before we go into the next scam, I just wanna let you know that even though there are scammers here in Japan, overall, it's a very, very safe country. Most of the local Japanese people here are very honest and very trustworthy. So when you make your trip here to Japan, definitely keep some of these scams in mind, but also remember that the chances of them happening to you are very, very rare. Speaking of coming to Japan, today's sponsor Boksu is gonna give one lucky winner free tickets to Japan. Boksu is a Japanese snack subscription service that makes a perfect gift for you or anyone you know that loves Japan. And to sweeten the deal, if you get a subscription before December 31st, you'll have the chance to win free tickets to Japan. Just make sure you use our link and code EATS10 at checkout. That'll save you 10% up to $47 on your subscription. Boksu is filled with really tasty snacks like this. Hokkaido Yubari Melon Long de Shot. This is a melon flavored sandwich cookie. And melons are really, really expensive here in Japan, sometimes costing up to $50. The fragrance and aroma of honeydew melon is so perfect in here and this chocolate cookie on the outside gives it a nice roasted flavor so the combination is just absolutely stunning. So if you're ready to kickstart your Japan adventure then make sure to subscribe before December 31st using our link and code EATS10. You'll save 10% up to $47 and get some really tasty authentic Japanese snacks. Now you might be thinking that all of these scams are targeted towards tourists but even expats are not safe from being scammed. The English School Scam Target Naive Expats Many sketchy English companies and schools use tricks to scam foreigners into working for them for longer hours and less pay. One way is to exploit your lack of legal knowledge in Japan. So they may have a clause written in their contract that is illegal. For example, if you cannot teach a lesson, we can dock your pay $100 per lesson. Another way they scam foreigners is by refusing to pay for their health insurance. In Japan, if you work over 30 hours a week, you qualify for something called shakken hoken, which is social health insurance. The premiums are split 50-50 between you and your employer, so they'll use different little tricks to claim that you are not actually working 30 hours. For example, they may say that your in-class teaching hours are working hours, but the time you spend in the office doing prep work and other things does not qualify for actual working hours. So you could be doing 20 hours of in-class lessons plus 15 hours of office time. Combined, that would be 35 hours, but they may only report the in-class teaching hours, which is 20 hours, so that way they can get away from actually paying you your health insurance. And here's another scam that actually happened to a friend of mine. He met the owner of a small local English school and she told him that she was planning to sell her school for about 20,000 US dollars, which is a great deal for a school, including the students and all the materials there for you. My friend saw that opportunity and he jumped on it and the lady told him that she would need him to work with her for at least two years so she can teach him how to run the school, how to deal with the students, and everything involved with actually owning the school. My friend agreed and he started working there as a teacher and the boss was happy to discuss anything dealing with lessons or students, but whenever he brought the topic up about management, about ownership, about what he needed to know to actually run the school, she would become furious and she would refuse to talk with him. After some time, my friend realized that this was all a lie. She was never gonna sell him the school and that she had actually used this scam on other teachers before. Now it's difficult to tell which companies or schools are gonna be sketchy because there's a lot of small independently run schools in Japan. The best thing you can do is research as much about that place as you can on sites like Glassdoor or go to expat forums and ask anybody if they have experience working in those places as well. Also, try to familiarize yourself with the bigger, more reputable 
teaching companies and programs that are available here in Japan and try to work with them rather than these smaller independently run schools. But like I mentioned earlier, Japan is super super safe, especially when you compare it to other developed countries around the world. When I first came here, I was so shocked to see young people putting their phones and purses on the table at McDonald's and then just walking away to the counter as a way to claim the seat. Because I know where I come from in America, that stuff would be gone in an instant. You should definitely check out this video where Mrs. Eats talks about how safe Japan is as well as some really cool facts about Japan. Thanks for watching! Okini!